All right, here's a little live update video um, <clears throat> about various things. I will be making having another Hangout this weekend, uh, Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the agenda hasn't been set, but I've been thinking about talking about what would an acceptable world look like, you know, and I'm thinking a little bit from the antinatalist point of view that I don't know if, that we'll probably not have any antinatalists present, but if we did, um, then, uh, you know, I'd like to know, okay, the acceptable world isn't possible, obviously. That's what you guys would say. The, the acceptable world is not possible. Well, what is it, though, still? What, what would make things acceptable? Tell me this world, and I can get an idea of how impossible it is. I mean, for example, I think, uh, you know, I think people need to be productive. Um, on the other hand, what if you had a world where robots did all the labor? Then would people absolutely have to be productive? Well, no, probably then they just have to be decent to each other, you know. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, what would it take? The other thing is, speaking of antinatalists, if old fan uh, is available at any time, I'll also shift the hangout so that I can talk about the philosophy of art with old fan. So, old fan, if you see this, that's an open invitation, no pressure, whenever you might have time. Um, <clears throat> really, I see the illusions exist. You know, I'm named it after this book of mine, which has to do with uh, my theory of information, uh, which, from the cognitive point of view, has to do with illusion, because I think all illusion has to do with, with uh, I mean, all information has to do with some inherent illusion. You know, it's always in contrast to how things seem to be. We take things for granted how they seem to be, and then we get information that are slightly different than we seem to be, and this is the structure of why, no matter what we learn, there's always illusion to it. As soon as we think, no, it, it's an illusion that the sun moves, the earth is the one moving, you know, we're going to have to face the fact that the sun actually also does move. You know, the whole thing's moving. So, uh, you know, and so on and, and so on ad infinitum. So, uh, <clears throat> possibly ad nauseum. So what else has been going on? Uh, a bit of the universe, I was going to mention something about you, dude. Uh, you know, you made this, this uh, what most people would consider a really rude remark about my daughter. And have I thought about my responsibility? And also that it was because I didn't deserve her and because I have this hobby of discussing things online. Well, you know, obviously, uh, that's bullshit. And I've long since learned that people on the internet are not really out to help you figure out uh, any emotional things or, or your responsibility for things. Um, you know, so I answered him. Anybody could go see the comment. Um, you know, I have thought a lot about my responsibility, and as I do that, you know, it, it, uh, it, there's a lot of different kinds of responsibility, and a lot of different people have different kinds of responsibility. And ultimately, I take responsibility for the whole set of it, because that's what I did being a father. Is, is it was all my responsibility. And uh, the, the funny thing, though, is that he did this in an objection to talking about feelings at all. He made this totally emotional blow, or an attempt at one. And uh, it's like, make up your fucking mind, OK? You want to talk about emotions, I'll prove how I can talk about serious emotions, because that's what we have to do to survive this world. Um, and, uh, you know, a bit of the universe is always kind of like, his objection circles around, you know, you and me don't matter, it's just the everyone that kind of matters. It's like, no, dude, the everyone is made of individual persons. It doesn't matter because it's an infinite, you know, because it's uh, seven trillion zeros added up. Each one of us has worth. Each one is, you know, you lovable and worthwhile, and even if you've made mistakes, you deserve some respect. And, um, you know, what kind of respect might change depending on the nature of those mistakes and whatnot, but, uh, you know, there's an inherent value, and it really comes from the individual. So, um, I think when you pretend to just think about others, you're just ignoring uh, your own problems in the world. For example, when you freak out and lose empathy and are an asshole, you know, you just, you don't have to worry about that. Why? Because that's part of the self. The self isn't important. Well, it is important. You're sending in this big negative vibe in the space around you. It is important. It's important to the people around you, and even more so if you didn't know, which you don't, evidently, to yourself. But, you know, again, that's my opinion. 
it's just that it's correct. Um, another thing I've been thinking about is, you know, I think one of the fundamental problems, I, I really think geopolitically it's that we're putting up with this uh, black ops secret government thing. That is, is just such uh, bullshit. You know, and you have people like this, like General Petraeus sharing the sense of information with his mistress, and we're supposed to worry about it getting out to the people. It's like, look, all the bad actors and all the governments, not that those are always two different things, they all know this information. It's just the public, the sheep that, that don't get to know it. I mean, I've been thinking that really it even narrows down in the U.S. to something more narrow, which is this, this uh, there's an inherent corruption in the way uh, the police uh, take their fraternity towards each other. There's a tradition of you're supposed to lie and don't be a snitch. And it's like, dude, you're a cop. You're paid to be a snitch. You, you see people drinking in the park. You're paid to, to butt your nose in. So why would that not count against other officers that are breaking an even more serious law and trust with the, with the public? It, it wouldn't, unless you don't really care about the law. And that's not acceptable. I think this is a really serious problem. I don't see any sociological way to repair it. I don't uh, even fault, really, the police for having that attitude because of the whole brothers in arms thing that they're shoved into. It makes some sense. There's a, there's a natural tendency. Uh, if you're sharing the safety of life and limb with a fellow in arms, you know, it, it becomes inevitable. It's definitely easy to promote for people that would want to promote it for their own corrupt purposes. but. But even if you're not inherently corrupt, it's a corrupting influence. Fine. So, you know, maybe it's going to have to be uh, body cams for all the police officers. But I'm sorry. If you don't want to be a snitch, then don't be a cop. And uh, to the degree that we can have cops that don't have to be snitches, um, that's why the police officers should be able to give warnings. And if they see you drinking beer in the park, they could give you a warning. Um, but you can't actually have this... Um, this this idea that uh, that you're not going to uh, prosecute crimes in your own organization, you know, if you're if you're not going to do that, then how can you claim to prosecute crimes in, in general? It's uh, you know, and the same thing with the CIA. You get CIA, they they get caught uh, helping to traffic drugs or something to make money or some weird black art scheme. And then it's like, oh, that was just a bad actor, or they went too far. And it's like, well, if the CIA can't police its own organization, how's it supposed to be uh, policing the world on our behalf? And, uh, you know, so which is it? Is it not really doing that? And basically, we have this structure where these organizations uh, have this whatever's good for the CIA is good for America kind of attitude first. Whatever's good for uh, me and my uh, brother individual police officers is good for law enforcement and so on. And, you know, we have to break that cycle, uh, I think. Um, other than that, in my own personal life, I have been uh, looking for work. I have a phone interview tomorrow. I have a couple things that look very close to going through, uh, one of which I would have to move to Boston. Which, if I did that, I'd probably try to hold on. I mean, it would be a good job, so to speak. So uh, hopefully I would hold on up here to some something up here, even a rental, but maybe try to buy a house up here and just rent a small, a cheap apartment as I can down there and, uh, you know, go back and forth or figure out how to do that. Um, because I'm interested in being down in Boston near MIT, and there's a lot of cool stuff to do down there for, for me. Um, professionally, but um, but I really like Maine. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it.